Today's video is sponsored by Squarespace. Next on my little what if blank joined slash rejoined Formula One is a brand that has actually a pretty recent pedigree. They pulled out in 2009. They had eight seasons in the sport scoring multiple podiums. Obviously, you know already because you've seen the title to the video. Today, I'm bringing Toyota back to Formula One as if they joined in 2022, which fingers crossed. Why Toyota? There's been many suggestions of very exotic car brands that would have been very interesting to do, but why have I picked Toyota? Well, last weekend, the weekend just gone, they won Le Mans. Namely, they won the hypercar category, the top category, dominant performance, Kamui Kobayashi doing what he does, Mr. Consistent. The amount of times he's put that Toyota on pole at Le Mans is a joke. So now they've conquered Le Mans, I don't think they can do any more to really assert their dominance. They're also the biggest automotive car manufacturer brand in the world. Surely now they're perfectly positioned to transition that excellence over and conquer Formula One, surely. So let's go for a quick history lesson on Toyota in Formula One. They started their team, joined the grid in 2002. They actually signed the deal in 2000. They were gonna join in 2001, but they pushed it back a season because they weren't happy with the car development and forfeited their $11 million deposit. So not a great start. They based the team out of Cologne. They rejected motorsport value in the UK, which is actually, you know, quite refreshing. I mean, seven of the 10 current Formula One teams are all based within about 50 miles of each other. So it's nice to see a bit of diversity. So again, the debut season was in 2002 with Alan McNish and Mika Salo at the wheel. Didn't go great. They only scored two points all year, both courtesy of Mika in I think the first and third race of the season. A P4 in the Constructors title in 2005, the season where Fernando won his first world title with Ralph Schumacher and Jano Trulli at the wheel was their best Constructors finish during their tenure. 2009 was their last year in the sport. They only managed eight years. They cited financial difficulties for the reason they pulled out. Apparently, the Broader Toyota organization posted £2.9 billion in losses in early 2009. So they pulled the plug. Because ultimately, F1 is just a marketing machine. And if you're losing that much money, if you're hemorrhaging cash, then marketing is the first thing that gets cut. It was actually a pretty bleak time in F1 generally because you had Honda, Toyota and BMW all announced their withdrawal within about 11 months of each other. So moving to the here and now, 2021 going into 2022, new cars, new regulations. Look, Toyota is still the biggest automotive car manufacturer in the world. They've had loads of success over Le Mans, WRC, NASCAR, Dakar with Toyota and their sister brand Lexus. Huge moves in electric mobility as well. Obviously, the Prius has been flying that flag for a long time. I just feel that F1 is way more marketable to a younger audience than ever. It's more relevant amongst the broader populace. I think this is a great chance for Toyota to jump in. So like I always do, I'm going to go through each constituent part that makes up the Formula One team. Obviously, not to the finest detail. So you've got the drivers, you've got the team principal, you've got the engine. And then I'm going to design what I think the driver overalls and the car livery if Toyota decided to return to Formula One in 2022. And again, 2022, that means I'm using the new Assetto Corsa Racing Studio 2022 F1 car model. I've been using the 2021 one in the past, now it's two. And if you are interested in making your own, you just need, as far as I'm aware, you need a PC, you need a Assetto Corsa, and you need the Racing Studio car model and livery pack. I have linked that down in the description below. This isn't a tutorial, but if you wanna do it yourself, check that out below. Now that's the thing with Squarespace. They haven't only supported me in the form of these ad reads, but I've been hosting my personal website on Squarespace for years, like way before my YouTube kicked off. So if you're looking to put yourself out there, whether it's your portfolio of work, whether it's a blog that you've been wanting to write, whether it's an online e-commerce store you wanna build, or whether it's just you wanna learn how to make websites, Squarespace is the perfect, it just is the perfect all-in-one platform to get started. And you can jump in and play with most of the tools that are available in Squarespace completely free of charge. It's only when you actually wanna put that website live that you have to pay for anything. If that sounds up your alley, head to squarespace.com. If you like what you see, build a website 
And then when you're ready to put it live, use the code TOMOF1 at checkout or give the link in the top line of the description a tap for 10% off your first website or domain. One day, I promise I will do a pink and gray Tomo F1 branded livery. And we all know that Squarespace will, of course, be the title sponsor. We're going to start with the engine. Now, in the past, like the Peugeot video I did last time, check that out via card above if you want to watch that one as well. I've talked about the fact that it's not worth a team coming in, developing their own engine because we've got the new engine regulations coming in in 2025. So they'd only get three years tops out of any power unit they're going to develop, right? There's two points in favor of Toyota here though, is that one, they're just operating on a completely different scale to any other automotive brand in the world. They've got a market cap of $183 billion, which is almost twice that of the second biggest, which is Volkswagen. So they've got the money, but not only that, the thing is they've already almost perfected the art of developing a high performance hybrid powertrain because they developed the engine that goes into their Le Mans car. The GR010 hybrid that won Le Mans last weekend was entirely built and powered by Toyota. Of course, the Le Mans and the F1 engine rules aren't identical, but they're both still V6 hybrids. There are definitely learnings that Toyota would be able to apply from that hypercar into Formula One and develop an engine relatively quite quickly compared to the vast majority of other automotive brands. They've got the resource, they've got the expertise. I've got zero doubt in my mind that if they really wanted to do it, they could make it happen. So the Toyota Gazoo Formula One team would be powered by their very own Toyota built powertrain up to and included and beyond from 2025. Next, we have the team principal. Who's leading the line? Who's Toyota's Andreas Seidel, Toto Wolf, Franz Tost? Who's heading things up? Well, when they were last in F1 back in 2009, the team was headed up by Tadashi Yamashina, although he doesn't seem to be part of the Toyota motorsport equation any longer. So then let's look back at their most recent success at Le Mans, because the implication I'm bringing here is that Toyota have already completed Le Mans. So sack that off, chuck everything into Formula One, kind of like Mercedes have done by sacking off the Formula E team. They've said it themselves. They want to focus on Formula One. I'm saying bring over the individual who led up the Le Mans success, bring him to the Formula One team. And that man is Hisatake Murata, current team president of Toyota Gazoo Racing. Hisatake spoke at length of their pride with you know three Le Mans titles going into this year. They've made it four now. I mean, you look at Andreas Seidel's success. It didn't come from Formula One. He's not Formula One born and bred. He was a Porsche guy. He came into F1 and has done a fantastic job at McLaren. I think Hisatake could do the same thing, applying all of those WEC learnings to the F1 team. So this Toyota Gazoo Formula One team would be headed up by team principal Hisatake Murata. Now it's driver pairing time. So Toyota are going to be, in this instance, the only Japanese team on the grid because Honda obviously are pulling out at the end of this season, even though they've not got their own team. You know what I mean? So who do Toyota fill those seats with? Well, the first driver for me is an absolute no brainer. Okay. A man who's raced 75 races in Formula One, which is actually the exact same number as a certain Mr. Pierre Gasly. He scored his one and only podium at the 2012 Japanese Grand Prix, which is one more than Nico Hulkenberg ever scored. Sorry, Nico, but it's true. He's still only 34, so he's still about a year and a half younger than a certain Mr. Lewis Hamilton. And he's already firmly ingrained into that Toyota Motorsport family, having achieved multiple successes over multiple years as part of their WEC setup. And he won last weekend. It's obviously it's Kamui Kobayashi, obviously. He should have never lost his seat in the Formula One in the first place, if you ask me. The bloke was absolute mustard back then, and he still is now. It is true that Kamui hasn't raced in Formula One since 2012, so this would be 10 years later, but this is a new car. He's not the only one who's going to have to adjust to a new package. Everyone is. And Kamui's raced in loads of different motorsports since he left Formula One. That experience is only going to help him. He's raced in Formula One, Super Formula, loads of GTs and World Endurance Championship. Alongside Kamui, someone with an experienced pair of hands, I think they could afford to bring in a young driver, but I'm not talking about a rookie, someone who hasn't raced in Formula One. I'm talking about a driver now who, I'll be giving this some thought. I don't know if they're going to get the call up to the team they want to in the near future. So maybe Toyota would be a great opportunity for them to flex because at their current team, they're not getting that chance. I'm talking about Mick Schumacher. 
Now, the reason I say this is because, you know, Carlos Sainz is doing such a good job at Ferrari at the minute. Even though Ferrari are clearly trying to line him up for that Ferrari seat one day, with Carlos driving so well, I think that could be a while off. So, Haas, I'm not confident in long term. I think Mick Opportunity at Works team at Toyota, Ferrari, send him there. Keep him in your driver academy for all you like, but give him to Toyota because I think Mick has a lot of talent. He's got a lot to give and he's got his year in Formula One from this season where he's made his fair share of mistakes granted, but he is a rookie and I think he's been the strongest of all the rookies this year. If Carlos Science wasn't doing so well, I probably wouldn't put Mick here, but the fact he is, I think that's, again, that's kicking that Ferrari opportunity down the road a bit for Mick. And then for test slash reserve driver, the one on the sidelines who helps car development, but also a young prospect I think Toyota would want to give a chance to. I think they'd want to give a chance to a young Japanese driver just as Honda did to Yuki Tsunoda. And I watch a little bit of Super Formula and Super GTs, but I'm, I'm kind of versed in the grids, but not massively. But there is a youngster who has stood out as far as I'm concerned. And that's Toshiki Oyu, only 23 years of age, currently sitting P2 in the Super Formula standings and he's racing in Super GT this year. I think he'd be worth a shot chucking in as a reserve role. It would only help his development. He might get a few FP1 outings. I'd like to see it. So my Toyota Gazoo Formula One team would be made up of Mick Schumacher, Kamui Kobayashi and Toshiki Oyu as reserve test driver. It's driver overalls time. Finally, something aesthetic for you lot to look at, okay? So, Toyota love a bit of red, a bit of white, and a bit of black as well. They put a lot of black into their, a lot of their GR motorsport. You look at their Yaris rally car, you look at some of their Supra uh, touring cars. Like, I mean, their Le Mans overalls are well black. So, I'm doing the same with these. Nice, smart black strip down the middle, bit of red, bit of white on the sleeves. Obviously got Denso. Big partnership with Denso long term, so that's fair. Mobile One. I've dragged a lot of these logos over from the Le Mans project because obviously they're brands that Toyota have some kind of relationship with. Makes sense. Zen, Asin, Mobile One, Acronis, they all make an appearance. Acronis are already on, I think they're on the Williams uh, this year anyway. So again, some of these brands are already in Formula One. Mobile One, they're already a fuel lubricant provider to some of the F1 teams anyway. So again, there's a lot of cross this whatever this is put the Toyota Gazoo racing down the left and the right leg but on the front and the back because that's just how the lockup works pretty smart if you ask me I'm quite happy with these and last but by no means least it is of course the livery this is what I think the 2022 Toyota F1 car could well look like I know some of you will be disappointed that I haven't straight up copied the old 2000, well, 2002 to 2009 livery. It didn't really change that much because it is an iconic livery. It's one of my favorite liveries in Formula One of all time. The, the slashes, the jaggedy edges, like it's great. But to, if they're gonna come back to the sport, they're not gonna wanna hark onto the past. They're gonna wanna stamp a new authority, have a car that stands out and is iconic to their return to Formula One because it wasn't that successful. As much as the livery looked great in the past, it wasn't actually that successful as a car. So here I have taken inspiration from um, some of their old Le Mans cars where I've basically built this livery around these two angled cuts here and here where the red is. And then it's, it, it's a white base with red added rather than being a red base. It was a bit tricky with this new uh, livery because this is the first livery I've designed with this new platform with the 2022 car. I mean, this nose is huge, so there's loads of room for sponsors. I do reckon that some of these decisions, I'm not gonna lie, with these big fins, it's much easier to get sponsor logos looking good on these because there's way less finlets and all that. So hopefully it improves the racing, but also improves the marketability of the sport, I guess. I brought one and one over off because again, I'm implying that Mick Schumacher will race for that team. So a little bit of exposure on the car. This Toyota Gazoo, I just think this lo this lockup, this Gazoo lockup just looks so cool. I love it. Um, so I placed it, I placed it quite low on the car actually, because I wanted to make it feel a bit, it, when I put this higher up, it felt, it made the car feel quite tall. Obviously Denso is always big on the side of these Toyota cars. Again, little logos around here. These wings, I mean, look at the angle on the wing here. So get in a sponsor logo in there that works well i mean a crone is probably it's probably up here where the logo really should be but i like the design like this so deal with it a 
got the little black fin with a 47, which kind of disappears on the black background, which I really like. So a here, one on one there again. And then, yeah, it's simple. It, I could have spent a lot more time on this, but I, again, I can't dedicate too much time because I've got to get the video made and all put together. Ultimately, I've kept it quite simple, but I think it stands out. We've got good Toyota legibility on the wings. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm happy with it. So there we go, the driver lineup is done. All three, one, two, and reserve. We've got the team principal in place as well. Then the driver overalls. Again, I'm, I'm very happy with these. I think these look pretty damn smart. And you know, I've, I've put a lot of black in it because that's what Toyota like to do these days. Helps with sponsor legibility as well, to be fair. And then we have the car livery. It's gonna have a Toyota power unit in it as well. Keep it all in-house. I'm really happy with how this is looking, uh, but let me know in the comments below. What do you think? Do you think I smashed it? Do you think it's a dud? What would you have done differently? I love making these ones. I really enjoy the livery design. I wish I had a bit more time to do this a bit more. But also I wanna keep things mixed up. You know, I don't wanna do the same type of content every single video. Thank you everyone for watching. Thank you again to Squarespace for sponsoring me, supporting this video. I'm just buzzing like it's, it's spa this weekend. The long break is finally over. And I will be doing my qualifying live stream. So keep an eye out on your sub boxes. Oh yeah, if you're not subscribed, this is the time to now do that. Okay, and like the video. My name continues to be Tomo. Thanks again. Have a good one. Ta-da.